Howdy y'all in good time zone. Welcome back to the Humans of Twitch, a podcast showcasing the diverse backgrounds of individuals who have found enjoyment and community through online gaming. My name's Embaronat, or Nat if you're, uh, I don't know, just whatever, anyone. Um, and today I am super stoked to chat with one of my moderators and also longtime friend from whenever I first was on Twitch in 2019, Vivianite, or V as I call them, although she does have many a nickname <laughs> depending on how you know her. And super excited to have you get to know them and learn about uh, their artist journey on Twitch, what it was like growing a Vietnamerican online through artists and speedrunning communities and also learning more about themselves in terms of their gender and sexual identity journey through twitch and meeting their partner online as well after four years of dating um yeah this was a really great chat and i love them so much and can't wait for you to get to know V. All right, all right, all right. Hi, V. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to chit chat with you today. How are you? I am doing so fantastic today. Oh my god, love to hear it. Do you have? <laughs> did you have bubble tea at all today? <laughs> I oh, I should have, but I did not. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's but, you okay. Know, that's, it's okay. always <laughs> always once a week or something like that. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta. I actually, very unrelated to this podcast, I actually just got some new protein powder that's literally called boba tea protein. Um, I've heard of that. Oh my god. <laughs> it's legit really good. My friend told me really? about okay. it. and I gotta try it out yeah. then. Yeah, I got the taro one, and yeah, it legit tastes like just regular, like, milk tea, and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> it's mind-blowing, but supposedly good for you, so yeah. But um, anyway, aside from that, can you give a small introduction of yourself? Hi, yeah. So I'm Vivian Knight. Um, I go by a lot of nicknames. You probably True. heard of V, Viv, Vivi, some variation of that. Um, I am mostly a Twitch artist, but I do hang around the speedrunning, the art, the variety communities. But for the most part, I personally stream art and indie games and... I've been active on Twitch since around 2018, 2019, and I go by mm -hmm. Meishi. Yeah. So cool. That's a good good summary there. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Have you always gone by Vivianite as your username? No. So actually, I had a much longer username. Um, I really? used to be a Homestuck fan. Super, super into the Homestuck fandom. And, wow. Uh, there's like a specific... A lot of the characters have a specific naming convention. So my uh -huh. first username was enthusiastic or er, enthusiastic devotee, but I typoed enthusiastic, so it's enthusiastic. <laughs> and I was like, that's oh not God. a word. <laughs> that's amazing. I love that. <laughs> what made you decide to switch then to Vivianite? Yeah, so that's really funny because it's actually it's actually I would say like an off the cuff kind of um, name that I changed to. Yeah. I, my sister and I, we started watching Steven Universe. She got into it way more than me. But mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I like the idea of, like, you know, gem people. And I found out that Vivianite is actually a gem. And the color of that gem is actually, like, in that range of colors that I really, really love. It's, like, a jade-ish kind of, like, oh. green-blue. And I was like, this is gorgeous. It's me now. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I love that. I didn't realize that. Because I know that there's, like, a little bit of connection with your, like, IRL name and stuff, but mm -hmm, yeah. that's also cool. Oh, man. So, from your perspective, how did we connect on Twitch? Like, what do you remember of first seeing me, I guess? Yeah, so, like I mentioned, I hang around the speedrunning communities, and we met from Link is 7's community, and this is yeah. around his peak Wind Waker HD. Mm -hmm. Um... And we shared a lot of circles from around there, and I remember we just did, being, yeah. like, super impressed. I'm like, oh my god, starstruck by Nat. Um, I was kind of intimidated, I won't even lie. <laughs> I was like, she's so, so funny. cool. Um, and then I got to know you, you know, you were super welcoming and friendly to me. We just, we hit it off instantly. Yeah. 
and mm-hmm. we just have so many shared interests of you know food boba culture all that stuff mm-hmm. and like viola violin stuff like mm-hmm. that too yeah 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 because it's yeah it's so funny you have mentioned before like like that notion of like me being cool which is something that my brain just can't fathom right now but or ever but um i remember being like starstruck by you because like you were very integral in the linkus community and so and like pretty much every time i popped in like you were there and like chit chatting with like other regulars and it was just like oh yeah that person's just so cool like that's oh my really, gosh and then yeah a really nice sweet way of saying that i was chronically online at the time oh my god <laughs> listen it was you know Mar- like it was 2020 so like yeah that's true (laughs) we're both of us chronically online so yeah and uh, yeah you were just a devotee how about that (laughs) so i know you're you mentioned mostly like artistry and stuff but like when in regards to like getting into like the speed running circles like what made you get interested in those circles like what was the first video game console you can remember and such so i actually didn't really know about speed running um mm-hmm. i actually growing up my parents were actually pretty strict about gaming is mostly yeah. like edutainment oh, really? <laughs> yeah but um i want to say around the time i was like eight or nine i remember they got me like a nintendo wii that dates me pretty young compared <laughs> to some people but um yeah. it's okay. they got a hard drive <laughs> that was like you know 500 plus games Definitely legal, mm, I wow. promise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All legalities here, yeah. Uh-huh, so I got to explore <laughs> a bunch of different games. I remember I, like, would just try to scroll and see what caught my eye. Uh, one of my favorite series of all time, Rune Factory, had a Wii release called Rune Factory Frontier, and I just have oh. these vivid rem- memories of just, like, after school, getting home, running upstairs, and just pouring hours upon hours and you know i'm a farming sim addict (laughs) yeah yeah those are such fun memories like the yeah i have that a little bit with like club penguin oh my god yes and like logging (laughs) in also like i remember like i really loved toontown back in its like heyday where like i would like strategize if i were to like start an account from fresh because i didn't want to pay for to it too much but I remembered I just wanted to, ma- like, maximize stuff. I'm trying to remember, like, logistics. I just remember wanting to wake up early and get on Toontown and just, like, go at it all day if I could. Um, but, yeah, that was, that's so fun. <laughs> I'm glad that you were able to get that despite, like, you know, strict parents and such. Because, like, your parents are strict, you're a Viet American. Like, what has your experience been like being online um, as Viet or, you know, just Asian American in general? Well, you know, like, our little corner of the speedrunning slash adjacent community, it has been super amazingly diverse. Um, I consider mm-hmm. myself so lucky to have met and clicked with so many people who are, like, open to, you know, Asians and Asian American and Viet cultures. And, you know, aside from that, even the artist circles I am in, they just have, like, so many people of color, which is just super refreshing. Um, mm-hmm. I... I have to admit, I'm a little guilty. I do have a bias. I tend to follow, like, artists or, you know, content creators I know who are Asian or Vietnamese American. Yeah. But, you know, anyone who has any tolerance or interest in Asian culture, I'm I'm there. <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I mean, also, I guess leading into my second question that I think I wrote from, that you can see... Um... Have you noticed, like, people treat you differently online when they learn you're Asian, even in Indies accepting circles and stuff? Mm -hmm. So, there have been really few instances in the past where I've had, like, little comments or just... I don't want to call them (laughs) incidents, that's kind of, like, misleading. Um, But something that comes to mind, I always think about it, it's very... It was very strange at the time, but, like, you know, retroactively thinking about it, it's like, oh my god, that's hilarious, but crazy um yeah i one of the very very first times i ever like voice called someone while gaming we were playing fortnite or something silly um nice. and they knew i was asian but i obviously had never really like said anything about it or really showed like had my voice out there and mm-hmm. we were just playing for a little while and like i don't know where they go you sound pretty white for being asian which i was like what oh. <laughs> wow it was just so out of the blue <laughs> Um, but, you know, very far and few between. Um, overwhelmingly, I found that, you know, 
I yeah. end up gravitating towards people who, you know, treat me no different or they're super, super interested in my yeah. culture. Um, one of my best friends has asked me, like, what is your favorite dish so I can cook it? And I'm like, wow, my heart. Aww. That's my love language. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. All the food. <laughs> that's amazing. I can't believe that story happened, though. Like, oh, my gosh. Mike, what do you say in that moment while you're I know, just gaming, like, you know? I was 17. I was like, oh what am I doing? <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> yeah, like, should I be, like, what is the reaction I should be having or you're expecting me to have out of this? Like, right. I just, <laughs> yeah, like, should I be glad? Should I be, like, c- concerned? Should I be, like, I, I just, I, I would just imagine feeling very perceived in that moment and you're just like, wow, I didn't even realize that, like, my voice is something I have to be, like, like, or right. people I are aware like, of that. Do I have a Valley Girl accent? <laughs> <laughs> I never thought about it, but <laughs> yeah, you are from California that after all. So West Coast, best coast. Hey. West Coast, best coast. It's so true. <laughs> it depends on which coast or which who I'm talking to, but I'll say that um, <laughs> as someone who is, uh, I guess, Great Lake Coast right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> Lake Michigan's not too far. So Lake Michigan coast, best coast i guess like it looks pretty totally though. cow <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i'm excited to do more hiking there in the summer because it does look very pretty but oh what gosh, i've seen of it imagine. it looks cold <laughs> um in, gra- in regards to like your artistry on twitch um for those who don't know so v aside from being a mod or raider for me like one of my earliest mods mind you also has done much art for me including my sub badges which are the not at all depressing iceberg emotes that progressively get a little smaller and smaller with each time frame. Um, and also a really cool uh, study with me um, artwork that I use for thumbnails and maybe be using for future YouTube co-working streams. So, but anyway, so V, what has your journey been like as an artist on Twitch? So yeah, um... Again, like I mentioned previously, um, we met in Lucas's chat. This is also where I, you know, I started sharing my art in Twitch circles specifically. I was mm-hmm. super shy at the time, so I wasn't sure how my art would have been received. But mm-hmm. people love seeing art of streamers they enjoy. And, you know, streamers yeah. love receiving support through fan art too. So that mm-hmm. overwhelming support I got just made me more confident in sharing my art, both fan art and original art. Um, yeah. Which... It's been so, so nice. And eventually I gained the courage to open up art commissions, you know, thanks to the support of everyone. Um, yeah. You included, of course. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> you did that too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. I've, I've been able to meet so many amazing artists. Uh, for one, the incredibly, you know, skilled and quick Angel Rose star who does your emotes on Switch. Yeah. Uh, one mm-hmm. of my best friends and biggest inspirations, Daily. Yeah, Daily. <laughs> Even for me, who's not an artist, just Daily inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> you do like a blend of like commissions that you do, like you've met via Twitch, but then you also have a Ko-Fi um, page, no? I do. So yeah, um, the Ko-Fi is, I guess I would consider that passive income. I do, okay. I have like a little shop on there, but I also do patreon like subscription updates where mm-hmm. i just like it's more of like oh here's what i'm doing in this like my life update what's your major isn't it related to design yeah so um funny enough i started in college as a computer science uh, major That's which right. is to- i remember that too totally different um but during the pandemic i was like super burnt out i was like oh, i not enjoying what i'm doing and then i realized i do art basically for a living already why don't i just make Mm -hmm. that switch to being an art related major so currently i'm now a graphic design major and best change of my life yeah so cool yeah it seems so fitting for you too um have you have like any of your classmates um found out that you do like online commissions via twitch and such yeah, so a lot of my art friends and classmates are also somewhere in the online sphere. You know, they either have yeah. social media or they're also just as much of a nerd as the rest of us. So a yeah. lot of them do know <laughs> that I stream. A few of them have even stopped by, which is really cool. Oh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is really cool. Yeah, I don't have too many um, IRL friends who pop in. Um, 
I'm not sure how much you've seen Norby around, but yeah, she's one of my IRL friends who I met in grad school, um, but also just happens to be a nerd. I think we learned like after the fact I was on Twitch that she also had been on Twitch on occasion. So, um, so it has been fun to world. like, literally, yeah. And so we chit chat a good bit about video games and stuff nowadays and she likes to pop in when she can and yeah, but yeah, nerds rule, rule the world indeed. Um, so, um, speaking of friends or, you know, quote unquote friends, um, <laughs> similar to me, you have found a partner on Twitch. Um, can you share how you met and realized y'all had more than just a friendship? You know, a lot of these questions, when you <laughs> sent them to me, I was like, I can answer these, most of these with Linkus' chat. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know, my bad. <laughs> Shout out to Linkus, I guess. But yeah, we I guess, yeah. Banter quite a bit through his chat. Um my partner Onaku TV or Naku. Uh he was mm -hmm. a moderator at the time and you know, we just talked a little bit, but it was just here and there. Um mm -hmm. one day I remember, you know, I was just bored, I think. I was just scrolling through and I was like, "Oh, you know, some of the mods are streaming. I'll check it out." Yeah. Um and he also speed ran as well i was like wow that's cool i stuck mm -hmm. around we would share a lot of memes and cursed emotes um and that was Best like way of falling in love <laughs> memes pull <laughs> yeah yeah but um interestingly enough i think we got closer i was having cold feet on opening commissions i was like oh, i don't know um pricing all this like kind of logistical stuff and mm -hmm. i was joking i was like you know if you remind me, I'll do it. And he was like, bet. I was like, you won't do it hourly. And endearingly and like shockingly enough, like every almost every hour he was awake and that he was able to, he would just be like, when are you doing commissions? And it Aww. was very silly, but I was like, yeah, he's he's been my one of my biggest supporters from the very beginning. That's really sweet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So then from there, how did it develop then? Because, I mean, he's come to visit you even. And for those unaware, he lives in Sweden and he lives in California. Yeah, it's staggering. Um, We, you know, we started talking. Um, I couldn't honestly tell you who developed yeah. feelings first. It's a debate as you know, yeah, <laughs> you know always. how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> Who did it first? Um, but I think we just got to talking and we were like, you know, we talk to each other so much. Do you want to try something? Mm -hmm. And it was like kind of off, off the whim, but we were like, we'll try it. And, you know, I didn't think we would get as far as we have, but it's, yeah. it's, it's coming up on four years, which is crazy to me. That's nuts. Yeah, that's wild. Cause I remember, I don't remember like exactly when it happened, but I do remember like being in our little circles and stuff. And like, then the jokes were starting to like, you know, oh, yeah. and there stuff. were a lot of jokes and people were like, oh, are these two together? And at the time I was like, that's weird that you guys are saying that. And I thought about it. I was like, I kind of have feelings for him. Yeah. It happens like that. Um, that's so funny, but yeah, so cute. How was it like having him visit? Because that's the, uh, at least the trip that I know. Is that the one time he's come to visit you? Yeah. So that was, I think, summer twenty twenty two. That was one of the like the best two weeks of my life, to be honest. Aww, um, so sweet. Yeah. It was really nice. He stayed at my house, and we like I took him around. <laughs> I I was like. I'll drive you around and I'll show you all the nice little places to eat. And I, at the end of the, um, we also went to Disneyland. And honestly, Aww. for me, I was like, Disneyland was overrated. And he had yeah. getting heat exhaustion. So I think he has the same. Oh sentiment. my God. <laughs> we went I mean, on yeah, I can the imagine hottest day of the that summer, would happen. So. Oh, the poor Swede. I can, yeah, it was, it was cursed <laughs> from the start. <laughs> But yeah, towards the end of the trip, I asked him, you know, like, what is the one thing you're gonna miss? And he was like, well, obviously the boba, but just, like, the options of food. Because I live in, like, I would say, like, one of the more populated and diverse areas in California. Mm -hmm. So we yeah. have so many food options. I was like, okay, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, any of the times you sit, like, you post your, like, your snap stories or stuff, or just send me, send me snaps, I'm like, 
of food. I'm like mouth watering just at all times because um, it all looks so good. But yeah, I can imagine why he would say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how have you explained your relationship to those outside of Twitch, like family and friends and all that? Yeah. So um, for my family, it took a while to explain with my parents. I actually, yeah. they're very traditional. So I <laughs> kind of, mm. at first I was like, I don't know how to tell them. At first, it's like, do I say I he studied abroad or something? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, yeah. I think I waited a year and I was like, you know, I'm dating him. This is what it is. And yeah. my dad's actually, uh, he does art. So I was like, we met because oh. of me sharing my art. So I think they were pretty mm -hmm. open to that. Yeah. But I think they're still definitely grappling way. around the long distance <laughs> part of it. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. But um, for everyone else, I think, you know, these days, it's pretty nice because people just kind of get it. If you're like, oh, I, we met yeah. online. Um, mm -hmm. For the people who are a bit more nerdy, a bit more online, I'm just like, yeah, I met him on Twitch. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's been the fun thing of having to now share in our, like, wedding website and stuff, like be honest, like, yeah, we met on Twitch. <laughs> I like, remember seeing that and uh, I was like, oh, my God so brave yeah. but also that's amazing <laughs> i fully expect the southerners to not actually say anything to me but they will be thinking and talking about it in, like amongst themselves about things but mostly just in confusion most likely <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah i was like my game playing has just been so isolated from like any other part of my circles like very few people in my life also play games so, but yeah, I know <laughs> we were like, uh, might as well. Cause like, we're going to have so many Twitch friends like come to the wedding and stuff. And so it felt very, like, it felt weird if we were to shy away from it. And so, yeah, but yeah, we tend to just random say random people <laughs> who are just crashing right? the wedding. <laughs> yeah. It's like, who are these people that are just very excited about being together with each other and calling <laughs> that vegetable or a gart. And then like, just, vegetable. yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Yeah, like, uh, which I know Gary's sad that his, like, IRL friends are going to get to know this <laughs> about him, because, like, I think some of them might know about Twitch, but they didn't know that he watched it. Um, so, yeah, they didn't know his username, but lol, <laughs> probably will get out. He's fine. He'll survive. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm the more active one, but <laughs> might have people just, like, pop in, but it's fine. As long as no one, like, says anything doxing. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Hopefully I won't embarrassing my I, I won't embarrass myself too much from I don't know. Real life moderating. I, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, like I do enough. I feel like I'm getting more and more comfortable with my own skin where it's like whatever I do online is like I don't really care if like others find out, even like say my advisor or people from my co like from my PhD program. Especially now with co working. That helps a little bit where it's like I'm <laughs> yeah, not right. just playing video games. Mwahaha. But yeah. No, that's so cool. Uh, speaking of, like, streaming a little bit, like, what made you interested in streaming in the first place, too? Like, I guess just, like, artwork, but then also, like, actual games and stuff. Yeah, so, um, because, you know, I didn't really grow up with games. I've never been as avid of a gamer as maybe some other streamers are. So mm -hmm. I can't say I was too keen on streaming games at first. But, you know, seeing other artists, like, again, Angel, Streamer Process Live, as well as getting live feedback, you know, she does her commissions live, she does them yeah. really fast, and everyone's like, oh my god, um, and I was like, this is an option I didn't realize was there. Yeah. And honestly, I didn't even expect to get any viewers at first, so it's just like, I'm gonna draw, it kind of started and is still kind of an accountability thing for me, sometimes yeah. I'll just draw my homework on stream and that'll help a lot but um yeah. and you know it's just you you know this too it's throwing a dart into the sea of streams out there mm -hmm. hoping it sticks yeah yeah for sure for sure um have you set any particular goals with, with like streaming or just like going with the flow and helping you know getting through your assignments and commissions um you know right now it's kind of go with the flow it's kind of tough to balance i sure you're yeah. related to uh but i'm hoping you know sometime in the future i'd love to experiment with you know in the interactive video of streaming i usually a png tuber 
And I get a mm-hmm. lot of inspiration from VTubing. Um, not like, you know, I want to become a VTuber straight out, but there are like a little aspects here and there that I've noticed that are super cool. I'm like, I want to integrate that somehow into my stream. Yeah. 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 Your PNG tuber is so cool. I love your little model. <laughs> <laughs> if you ha- didn't grow up playing too many games, how did you get into speed, like watching speed runs and such? So yeah, it's pretty interesting. I follow this artist online. I th- I believe his full name is Matt Cummings. Um, mm-hmm. He's done a lot of fan art. I followed him originally on Tumblr. Um, and then when Classic. everyone migrated to Twitter, I was like, okay, I'll follow you there too. And it's really cool. Every GDQ, Games on Quick, um, he does a charity, his his own little kind of mini charity will, where he does, his main medium is coping markers, alcohol markers. And he occasionally oh, okay. will do gouache too. And he'll make mm-hmm. these prints of certain runs that are being done, or inspired by these runs. And one time, um, he did Wind Waker. I actually wasn't a huge fan of Wind Waker, but I love the aesthetic. Yeah. And I was like, you know, maybe I'll check out both games and quick in this specific run. And mm-hmm. we'll, you know, again, link a seven. <laughs> yeah. It's a domino which, effect. Which one was he doing? Um, it was his 2019 run, so I want to say it was Wind Waker HD 100%. Okay, yeah, which is funnily enough because that is, uh, his, at least one of his Hundo world records, or his former world records, like, that was on YouTube. I think it was before 2019, though. Like, it, I think he was, like, in his old room in his parents' house before <laughs> he, like, got his yes. own room. Yeah, and so I remember just stumbling on that on YouTube and being like, my mind is blown. Because I did love Wind Waker, um, as a kid at least. Um, I didn't know it that well, like, and I never thought, to, I didn't know what speedrunning was until, like, maybe a week beforehand. But, because, like, I just started being like, okay, I can't, I kind of just want to, like, like, just explore, like, what this algorithm leads me. And then I remember seeing, like, any percent and, like, 100% and being, like, so confused with those, what that meant. Um, but yeah, no, yeah stumbled I onto totally his get run. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the lingo, like, whenever I first joined Twitch, I was just like, what is all this, like, lingo, especially, like, emotes and stuff, like, well, like, Twitch culture is so fascinating. <laughs> um, yeah, it's really funny, it's too, I think, too. um, for speedrunning specifically, I want to say 80% of the speedruns I watch, I have never touched before watching those speedruns. Wind Waker yeah. is one of them, I... <laughs> <laughs> you know this. Um, it's a running thing that I have not finished Wind Waker. Um, one day. One we day. Believe. One day. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The attempts on stream. They were glorious streams of Wind Waker <laughs> from V. But <laughs> yeah. Not as so cool. Yeah. That's funny how it was both hundos for us that led us to uh, link us in speedrunning, I guess, on Twitch. And to each other. <laughs> and to each other. Yeah. Well, awesome. Let's see. Yeah. How much would you say being online has impacted your impacted your gender and queer identity sort of journey? Yeah, so being online has opened up so many things about, you know, education and just exploration. Uh for a long time I knew I was, you know, I had some attraction to both genders. I I identify as mm-hmm. spiromantic asexual. Um, and at first in middle school, I was saying, you know, I'm bisexual and I was really comfortable with that label. Wow. That's uh, but awesome. I never really thought about sexual attraction though. Mm-hmm. Cause in my mind, I kind of conflated, you know, both attractions. Um, yeah, I was seeing a lot of people's experience online, you know, people were coming out as biromantic asexual and I was like, oh, what is this? So I you know, the opportunity to look it up, do a little bit of soul searching. And I was like, you know, I think that is how I feel. So it's, yeah, kind of, I would say it's like more refining that label instead of shifting mm-hmm. the label totally. Yeah, you know? for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally get that too in my own journey. Although like, yeah, mm, mine was a little later, I would say my early 20 or actually my aceness came in. I was pretty solidified by that, like, with that towards, like, in high school even, where I knew 
I had some degree of aceness. Like, I definitely did not develop crushes in the same capacity as my peers, it seemed. Um, nor, yeah. Um, though I did, like, develop, like, some sort of feelings over time, like, with very specific contexts, which mm -hmm. then, once I heard, like, once I stumbled on the word demisexual and, like, the, like, heard, like, definitions and videos about it on YouTube, I was just like, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> yeah, I don't like know. You... I just have these feelings fit. that you can't explain and then you find the word and it's like this is the word i've been looking for this yeah time. yeah exactly and that's where like kind of like labels don't have to define you but like labels can very much help you identify things and like explain feelings you've had inside so if they're helpful for you then they're helpful for you in my opinion but yeah in terms of the bi romanticism i wondered that myself for the longest time and that's where i thought i was leaning towards and then something like there was like some sort of crush that happened where I was just like, oh, no, yeah, yeah it's full blown bisexuality here. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's very, yeah, I, but the asexuality kind of like made it difficult to like uncover that for the longest time. Um, mm -hmm. And it was just like realizing, oh, this crush I'm having, this is the same steps that happened when, whenever I had my first, or like, I guess my first boyfriend um with this woman and it was just like oh, okay the dots are connecting now and it just like clicked right like, all right cool i don't have to deliberate this too too much at this time anymore it took a while for me to like actually i guess come out but then like at least i was in peace internally and stuff and so yeah, yeah. that's the most important part yeah for sure for sure uh when did you start using they pronouns yeah, so this was, I want to say, in the past maybe year or two at this point. It's the time's blurring. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, um, it blurs too. I wouldn't be able to tell you either. <laughs> <laughs> I've been always kind of neutral about my, like, gender expression. Um, mm. I don't really feel like I'm necessarily gender fluid. Uh, I'm still yeah. trying to understand my own relationship with gender, sure, but I think sure. it's pretty, like, nebulous for me. I have this Funny, funny term. Um, I say gender tenderizing oh, is I the love best. That. I it's like you take a meat mallet to gender, and that's how I feel. Um, <laughs> I love so that yeah, so I much. had some encouragement from my friends because I was like, I don't know, how I feel, and they were like, you know, why don't you just test out these pronouns? And yeah. I, you, I, you know, take that little push. The worst that can happen is you feel like it doesn't work for you, and you go back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I exactly. found that I really, I really do like using them alongside she, her. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm totally open to both. That's so cool. That, yeah, that's, yeah, I love that. Sort of just like, you know, like try it out and see how it feels inserting this out there into the, at, into the world. And then if it fits, if, and if it feels comfortable to you, then it's like, okay, sure, that works. And if it doesn't, <laughs> then it's just like, okay, we can just, you know attracted a little bit and no one's right. the wiser or you know it's just part of that sort of journey and stuff how would you say your twitch experience has changed since you first were on the platform in 2018 2019 aka you were in high school to now being a college student yeah so i'm sure most of most people like went through this but when you're in high school you're still trying to grow into yourself um trying to just understand who you are as a person um, and that was kind of the point where I was started watching Twitch. Where I was like, kind of understanding, you know, this. I have my own personality. Yeah. Um, back then, I definitely was a people pleaser. I still kind of am, but you know, we're we're working to unlearn that. Um, but <laughs> a lot of people back then, I think, knew me as that one person who said hi to literally everyone in chat, or just. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I've definitely mellowed out somewhat over the years, and I've had definitely, like, a bunch of positive experiences, but, you know, with the good, there's always a little bit of, like, the rougher side. Mm -hmm. So I definitely learned going from high school into college, I needed to stand my ground in some cases, set boundaries. Mm -hmm. But I think for sure my experience on Twitch has helped me be more confident in myself. Just being yeah. around people you enjoy being around, and they help you to become who you are. That's really beautiful. <laughs> um, I didn't have this as a question, but um, how has your experience been being, you know, a woman slash, you know, whatever, meat tenderizer or gender tenderizing <laughs> sort of like, you know, 
<laughs> non-male <laughs> on this right. platform has been um, for you? You know, like, most people, there's, like, most people are, like, whatever, girl on Twitch. There's always, like, the funny haha, you know, oh my god, there's yeah. a girl on Twitch, what am I gonna do? Oh my god, how um, do I talk? I know, it's, it's, but all, there's, it's always the people who aren't part of the community that say that, you know? And the yeah, people who always. are part of the community, they're chill. Um, yeah. few exceptions, of course, always a few exceptions. Um, mm -hmm. there's always been, not always, but there have been some people who, you know, are like, oh, a girl, I'm gonna, I'm gonna slide into their DMs and see what's up. Yep. Always gonna yep. be those kind of people. Um, mm -hmm. and I didn't really have a lot of romantic affection in my life, so I was like, what is happening? Is yeah. this... So, the the first few times it happened, I was, I definitely was in over my head. I was like, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> yeah, especially if you're, you know, like, yeah, in high school still, like, I can... Yeah, I mean, it was... I, I was, was in my like, mid-20s and still being like, what is happening? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> nearly 10 years older than you, and like, yeah. I can't imagine... Minus whatever years of me of being your age doing that or going through that too. But yeah, it's like you, the more it happens to you, you're like, all right, you're, you're a poser. <laughs> get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Like, all right, you're not trying to get to know me or like you aren't trying to be friends with me. You're just trying to look for something that is just like, doesn't feel genuine or yeah, something like right. that, you know? But maybe that's our aceness talking, where it's just like you kind of want to true. build it, build like you know. Let's just do it like nice and gradual sort of thing. If there is like to be built something or something to be built in general, but uh. I'm just coasting. <laughs> yeah, I like to just hang out with people. Okay, regardless of gender. Um, if you're cool, you're cool. So, so what would you say is a highlight of your content creation career thus far? Whether it, like in terms of artistry or in, on whatever sort of platform and stuff like that. Yeah. So obviously, like commissions were like something I couldn't imagine. But um, actually, what comes to mind the first I want to say I had a one off. I did it once and never again, and I don't plan on to, but I did a piano stream, just me and All my right. sister. I remember that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, This was right before my sister moved out from our family house, but um, mm -hmm. we decided, you know, we're going to practice some old pieces um, that we learned or were learning at the time, and we're just going to play them for mm -hmm. friends, and it was super scuffed, I will say. <laughs> Absolutely scuffed. The audio, I think, was absolutely peaking terrible from a logistic <laughs> standpoint. Uh, yeah. But it was, I had so much fun just playing piano for yeah. my friends. Mm -hmm. And Talents2461 actually rated me. And um, for those who don't That's know, amazing. he's yeah. a great speedrunner, great friend, and also a huge Ace Attorney fan. And he came in and I was like, you know what? I'm going to play some Ace Attorney just for fun. Uh, <gasps> it was just Oh, I bet magical. he loved that. Yeah, yeah, he, it was just so fun. Everyone had a blast. Yeah, having met Talon in person and Angel, which is so wild. Um, <laughs> like, yeah, it's, I bet Talon was just like over the moon about that. And also, I bet you were just overwhelmed with like, wait, did he come in with like a raid or just like he came yeah, in? Yeah, so in. he, he raided, he raided like after one of the speedruns. I was like, what is happening? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, like hundreds of people. <laughs> right. Potentially, yeah. Yeah, love Talon. Great person. That's so cool, though. Yeah, I think I remember, I remember that happening. I don't remember how much I was able to catch of it or if, like, I saw the very beginning before y'all got into it or whatnot. But, yeah, that makes sense. That, that would be a good highlight. That's really sweet. All right, why don't we get into the questions that I like to ask every week? What is something, video game or otherwise, that has you currently pog champing, has you pause champing, and something you're a pretty resident sleeper about? <laughs> I love this question. It's so funny. Thank you. <laughs> In terms of pog champing, um, you you know this already, but I oh yeah, Stardew Valley's update just dropped, <laughs> and I'm over the moon about it. Um, no spoilers yeah. for anyone who's planning on experiencing that, of course. But mm -hmm. every little new detail has me just fiending to explore. Um, I've been playing with my That's partner, so cool. 
been a blast. I want it. I'm hooked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I've of... been hearing a lot about it. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's... Ah. Ah. <laughs> in terms Amazing. of cost jumping, um, it's not quite video game related, but just a huge life update for me. Uh, this summer, I'm actually going to be studying abroad in Denmark. Um, oh really, really cool opportunity. Yeah, That's so cool. You'll be so close then to Anaku. Yeah, so it's going to be like a graphic design oriented program. And I'm actually going to be, you know, visiting him for a week after. That's so sweet. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. I can't stop smiling about that. I can't <laughs> wait to see that journey for you. Yeah, it's... I'm nervous, admittedly, because it's the first time yeah. I'll be traveling without family. But yeah, yeah. new experiences. I am just mm-hmm. over the moon. In terms of resident sleeper, I oh, I want to be so excited about um, the Princess Peach showtime that's coming out. But All right. I don't know, something something about it isn't isn't clicking for me uh maybe it's Mm -hmm. nostalgia i just i don't think i'll carry the same essence and charm that super princess peach does Mm -hmm. with even with all its flaws you know i i had a blast playing it um yeah i do think the outfit outfit designs are delightful but there's something about the overall like graphics and gameplay i'm just like it falls a little too flat for me to want to pick it up but oh yeah yeah i remember seeing that in direct and i wasn't that drawn to it but Maybe it's just right. I was I'm, like, whatever. I don't know. I don't the the cutscenes, like the trailer cinematics, look great, but the actual gameplay is like, I guess we'll see how it pans out. I guess. Yeah, I feel like. I mean, you know that I'm not the biggest Mario person, just because of just I don't have that nostalgia with Mario as much as Zelda. But, um, yeah, I feel like there's other Mario games I'd rather go towards before right. that one, but. Who knows? If it's really good, I'll I'll pick it up. Sure, why not? Maybe this will age poorly. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, let's aim like that would be a great thing in some capacity for it to age poorly. Mwahaha. There'd right. be worse things that age poorly. So, <laughs> of the things to age poorly, that would be a a good one, I guess, for the, at least for that game and the devs for it. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that makes sense. Awesome. Um, I can also answer myself. Something that I'm pog champing is I am deep in, um, this is not video game related, but I am deep into Drag Race Season 16. It is great. It's been going on for oh, like six weeks now, and we're still, we're only in the top six now. But yeah, consuming any and all content I can about that. Um, especially after I just finished Love is Blind um oh my god admittedly. i've heard i've heard many things <gasps> oh my gosh i was deep i got i loved watching interviews from like or just like recap podcasts from like different perspectives just because i'm a nerd like that where i like would listen to like say perspectives from say like there's uh one that's called um two black girls one rose so it's like these two black girls who you know watch a lot of reality tv and then they you know talk about it so i love getting their perspective on stuff that happened in the season. Um, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> then one of my others is uh, Gary loves this um, ESPN reporter who is half Korean, half white. And so, like, he gravitates towards her. And also, she's a woman. So, like, by nature, she makes men mad um, in that <laughs> world by existing. <laughs> um, but uh, so she actually is obsessed with Love is Blind. <laughs> and so she found like she and this other reporter who like they just would like normally just text about it. They decided to make a little recap show on YouTube. And it's so funny because uh, they're so thorough about it and they're just like so obsessed. But then they like have their ESPN voices and like will throw in little sports analogies. And sports, it's just so yeah, it's co- sports commentary. <laughs> yeah, and it's so funny. Um, but yeah, that and like NPR even. NPR had my favorite read on oh it because it. Like, the way that they just, like, summarized, like, um, the looks of this one contestant being very NPR and, you know, very emotionally mature about it. They're like... Right. They're like, so he looks like, um, one, and then others, like, someone else chimed in, a thumb, <laughs> which was like, oh, you wouldn't hear that on NPR normally. But then someone else, like, the person continues, is like, he looks like, um, about five guys you would find in any Midwest college bar. <laughs> That's how good. Ooh, that was accurate and yeah i hadn't heard anyone say that type of thing so yeah anyway that's my deep dive into loving love is blind so if you ever do watch it or have any questions i i'll definitely have to hit you somehow up. no yeah pause champing uh what am i pause champing um 
definitely a lot of traveling. I mean, my wedding in the end of May, getting a lot of stuff prepared for that. And also the honeymoon. for your wedding? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then also the honeymoon in Korea and then a little bit of Taiwan after. So that'll be super fun for June. Um, President Sleeper. Hmm. I, I know many of my friends are playing Hell Divers too, but uh, my from hearing the description of it, I don't think it's my kind of thing. I did get into Lethal Company, which was fun. I didn't think I would, but I think Hell Divers 2 is just a little too uh, shooter gamer. Shooter oh, game yeah. for me. I, I understand that 100%. Yeah. Well, okay. Moving away from me, what is your favorite <laughs> emote, you would say? You know, as an emo artist, I feel like my emote senses are kind of very keen, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. Um, so my favorite emote tends to rotate. Uh, right now, currently, it's got to be between... Um, there's been, you know, a little trend where Angel... When Angel gets into things, she's like a little trendsender. Mm -hmm. um, she's made these W emotes. Um, and I want to say our good friend Hasfar has one right now. Um, oh my hex gosh. speedruns. Yeah. So it's between those kind of like emotes and also, it's so funny. I I can I'm gonna you know just explain it to you. Okay. But when you see the visual, you're gonna be like, oh yeah, that's great. It's okay. Um, also hex speedruns emote is called hex B smack, and okay. it is his little bunny character. Holding a fly or frying pan and just <laughs> smacking a little poor sheep from Super Mario Odyssey. Oh my god. Hilarious. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. <laughs> In terms of oh. my emotes, though, it's kind of hard, you know, like they're all my children. <laughs> yeah, you have amazing emotes. Oh my god. Um, but I do emotes. think I I am personally biased towards my jump emote. It's also yes. like a fan favorite. <laughs> it did. Also, my sip emote, which is my OC Luna, mm -hmm. raising her eyebrows rapidly while sipping a boba. And that's Perfect. kind of just my energy, both of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I love your love emote, too. It's just like a classic. But yeah. Yeah, yeah those are also really good ones. Um, awesome. So, V, where can people find you? So, I'm... Vivian Knight on Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram for social media things. And if you'd like mm -hmm. to check out my work, or maybe even support me, you can find me by the same name, Vivian Knight, either on Ko-Fi or Vision. Okay, we will put those links below in the descriptions, regardless if it's podcast or video. So, yeah, y'all know. Yeah, there you go. You can find all of that there to support them. And you should! Uh, this was a great interview. Thank you so much, V, for joining me. I love it so for much. for having me. Love chit-chatting with you whenever I can. Um, <laughs> yeah, starstruck just to be able to chit-chat with you. So, yeah. I'll let you get back to Stardew, though. So, thank you so <laughs> much. This is so good. All right. Oh, my gosh. Wasn't that great? I love, I love V so much. And I really hope you enjoyed getting to know this wonderful human and be sure to check out their art and support in any of the ways you can thank you again for joining me for this episode of humans of twitch if you liked what was being played in your ear holes be sure to subscribe and leave a five star review if you feel so inclined and if you're watching on youtube be sure to subscribe as well and comment and like this video yeah let's do that I will be back again next week and cannot wait to see you then. Alright, bye bye.